Hi folks, we're back in the log cabin and it's another episode of the TGB Moped. Right, as you know, in the last video, we had a terrible job trying to strip this um, centre stand pin out and after that we give up. We got it, we got to a stage where we cut it and uh, basically I went indoors because I got fed up with it. Uh, I'm now at the stage now where I need to take off this generator, stator and rotor and that involves a flywheel puller. Well, I've got a flywheel puller, but I haven't got one for this moped. So what I've had to do is make up a little mock thing. I don't know whether it's going to work. You're watching this with me. First time I've done it. I've not practiced it at all. I've just cobbled a few bits together. And let me just show you what I've had to do. Right, well, it may look a bit Heath Robinson. What we've got is a centre spigot there, which is the actual crankshaft. I don't know if you can see that in there. And there's some holes there, which are already in this um, the rotor plate. And I found a couple of long screws to go in there. And what I need to basically do is wind them screws in and that then push on that centre pin, push on the crankshaft, and so that this actually pulls this rotor off of the actual crankshaft. It's, it's got a woodruff key on it as well, but um, I've had to cobble a few bits together. I've found a, an old spanner, I've got a nut in there, I've got a piece of wood to span this old hinge I found, and I've had to drill an extra hole in that hinge. So all I need basically to do is just wind these down evenly, and hopefully that should pull up the flywheel, that's what I'm hoping anyway, let's give it a go. So everything's under tension now, you see. So I don't know whether the wood is um, the socket sinking into the wood or not? I'm not too sure. I see this hinge bending. I'm nearly at the bottom of me um, of me long screws. All right. Well, as I say, I, I don't know whether or not the um, the wood is doing the job. So that's a compressible, you see. So I'm going to have to take that out and start carrying. But the idea is exactly the same as a flywheel puller, you see. But I don't know whether or not that wood was just compressing. So if I take that out. Yeah, I think the wood was just compressing. So I think it's a right idea. But um, I'm going to have to get rid of the wood. I did want to put a socket in there, you see, but I didn't have one the right size. Let me have another look. Right, okay. Under the bit of wood this time, I've put a couple of these or one of these brass plates here, so I'm hoping that's going to be strong enough to stop the wood from um, indenting. Plus, I've put a metal socket under there as well to make it a bit more uh, span the uh, bolt a bit better. Hey? So they popped that, up there. That frightened you. So basically what was happening was that it, it was the right idea, but that bit of wood should have been replaced by something hard because that was cushioning it. And it's Did you believe it? <laughs> so basically, we have done it without a puller. Whew, that went, didn't it? Made me jump actually. But you always get that with pullers, so let's just undo that a little bit. Pull this out of here. And as you can see, there we go. So we've actually got it off without the need of a purpose biller, a puller. All we've done is use a hinge, as you can see there, and a little packing space, a flat uh, piece of metal and a spacer, which was a socket. All right, at last, now we're very near now to splitting the crankcase. Right, okay then, so what we've got to do now is to take off the actual stator and there's a little trigger mechanism there so we've got to take that off as well so what we need for that is a 5mm allen bolt allen screw oh, can't undo that a little bit tight the 
The stator is actually held on by the looks of it by just these two Allen bolts, just slacking them off. I well, imagine this will be pretty uh, awkward to do on the bike, but it is obviously possible to do on the bike to remove one of these. The hardest part, basically, is to say, is just getting the flywheel off. So we've managed to achieve that, but um, obviously this one hasn't been off for probably never been off actually. So and uh, it would have been easier if the flywheel puller was available, but um, the variation that we made up was uh, able to do the job. And if I were to, if I was going to do that again, I would probably replace the wood with something more solid. But again, I was only just using what I had to hand, and uh, that's basically all I was using. The electricity which these things generate is AC. So basically, it's AC, which is like the mains you get coming out of your household socket. And this is obviously the wiring loom, which goes to obviously your rectifiers and your converts it to DC which then can charge a battery up because you can't charge a battery up with AC. So these are just, as you say, I've just undone them two bolts now. And that is undone that. Well, I can't take that off yet because I've got to remove this trigger because the cable goes behind it. And that one is a four mil, two four mil Allen bolts. So I'll just undo these. And two. I can notice on one of these ones that there's a little lug that goes under one of these little four mil bolts. So. So yeah, as you can see there, that's the whole lot coming up together. And just remove that out of the way. And there you go, that's free now. Now this item, I will be able to check because uh, this obviously should have set resistances between each of the coils and whatever. So I will be able to check this off on the uh, worktop and check online for the uh, correct values. So that, you know, because to get this off again would be a, a, a nuisance of a job. So I'll be checking this off, off, off the bike. Right now as you can see here, it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, five mil Allen bolts and that looks like all it is to remove and then I can take the crank off. So I'm going to crack these now. These again will have to be torqued up and five. So let's just undo these. Now I don't know whether these bolts are all the same length or not, but um, I will keep them in order at first, so that I can see, till I actually know for certain. And if they are all the same length, then we're okay. No, they're not, they're all different. Two, so I'm gonna lay them out in order first, and uh, take a shot of them, to make sure that I can see what order they go back in. I'm not saying that you should have to do this all the time, but, um, it just, it's belt and braces basically, so, you know, they'll, they'll probably, all of them be the same length and then the one will be the longer one, so, that's what I'm hoping anyway, so, so far it looks like that. So I don't know whether you can see there, we've got uh, the two outer ones, ones that ain't actually inside the casing, that's them two there, and that's, that's these two long ones, so the two long ones are the ones that go outside, the remaining ones on the inside, the other three, are or basically all the same length so that's just something to note you couldn't put them in wrong anyway because you'd never get the length of these two to screw in so there you go right okay so technically speaking now we should be able to give this a light tap and maybe split this crankcase up depends how tight the bearings are Looks like a little gap's appeared, so yeah, we're okay, I think. There we go. Right, okay. Well, the actual thing that's split there is the crankshaft is... Um, actually split we've split the bearings on the crankshaft which is very unusual normally the crankshaft comes out as one complete piece but as you can see look we've actually split the crankshaft and the small end has come out so we've still got both ends of the crankshaft which are actually fitted to the casings now what I'll do is I will drift these out by 
heating up around the uh, crank there with the hot air gun and I'll drift them out that way so at least we've got the cases separated now and as I say that's what I'm going to do now normally that comes off in one piece of crank and the bearings actually come out of the uh, cases but that's not happened in this instance right I'm just going to try and drift this crankshaft out now which is a lot easier on a more solid surface Here we go. So that's one half of the crankshaft out. And in actual fact, it, that crankshaft is actually broken. Now I'm wondering whether that's what's caused the, um, the seals to go. Because although it was all wasted in one place, it's actually broken. I don't think that's been caused by the work we've done, so I'm gonna find that out in a second. So let's move that over there. I've still got the bearings to remove there, as you know. Bring this half of the crankshaft over. And let's just um, drop that bit out as well. There we go. Right, now this is the crankshaft. And as you can see, that crankshaft is actually broken. Now obviously I'm wondering now, if this is why the, uh, the seals went, because the crankshaft broke. But it would have obviously still all been wedged in place, as you can probably see. But it would have had some movement. So that might have been the reason why. Because, I mean, that's not been broken with the uh, slight movement, what we've done, uh, separating the cases. That's nowhere near it with a rubber mallet as uh, caused that. So there you go, look. So it looks like the actual crank was actually broken. Although it would have all been in situ, because it would have been fitted in with the bushes and the seals. But their slight movement, what that would have created, is looks like that's what's actually caused the problem with the um, the seals. And looking at looking at that, that's probably been like that for quite a while because these brakes are very very smooth, like they've been slowly moving on each other over a, a, a period of time, like they've rubbed together and smoothed themselves off. So that looks like the original problem. It looks like the crank had actually gone. And um, that's what's caused our problem of our seals gam through the, the slight movement which that's created. So there you go. It looked like a crank problem all along. And that's why it wouldn't start. And as I say, I've taken quite a few motorcycle crank shafts out. And I've never had them actually split or separate when you've split the cases. I've never actually had them split on the main bearing. Because they're really pressed, they're pressed fit and it's a very, very tight tolerance fit. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that that's the conclusion. So all I've got to do now is drift these uh, bearings out of the cases and then we can get these cleaned up. So this bike has actually given me loads and loads of problems and hassles and no way could you have done this with the engine in situ. You needed to take the engine out to, call, uh, to get this sort of problem and you've seen the problems that you get with old bikes with bolts getting rusty, uh, bolts and nuts getting stuck in and you have to drift them out, heads breaking off, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there we go, just part and parcel of a bit of home working but treat it as a hobby and you, you know you might be banging your head about earning money and well whatever so anyway i'm going to carry on so hopefully you should be able to just lift these seals out these are the uh the oil seals there we go there's one now i'm hoping to be able to just drift them bearings out there so let's have a go if not i'll have to heat the heat up No, we're going to need to heat them up, so I'm going to heat them up with a hot gun. Right, now hopefully the aluminium will be heating up quicker than the centre bit and this drifting out now should be a lot easier.
There you go. So with a little heat in the right place, we was able to drift out that bearing. So that's number one done. There we go. So we'll do the same now. And in fact, looking in here, yes, there's little bits of metal. I don't know if you can see that. I've just dropped a little bit of metal that's come out of there. So little bits of um, metal filings on there. So yes, this has definitely been the problem. So the broken crank was definitely the problem. See, once you start taking things apart, you can actually see what's really happened. So there's no guesswork in it. That's what's caused all this crank disintegration. So we'll bring this one back over. See if we can get that seal out of there. Out, let's pull that one out. And underneath that seal, I can see the gear, the worm gear for the um, oil pump as well. So now I'll actually push that up now. As you can probably see that's the drive gear. Look for the um, for the oil pump. So that's all got to be cleaned up as well. That's all full up with gunk and grease and whatever. So that's got to be refurbished. And now it's just a matter of drifting out that bearing. And there's an inner seal in there as well. I can see which if I push it through there you can see there's the other inner seal there and just like the other one I'm going to heat up the uh, bearing race here around the outside and then tap it through like we've just done with the other one Right, okay. I've got that to about 65 degrees now, so I'm quickly gonna turn it over. Don't forget it's hot, so be careful with your hands. There you go, just turn it over like that. Make sure it's on solid or solid level. And hopefully just tap that bearing through now. All right, as you can see, it, it comes out. Once it's warmed up, it comes out a piece of cake. Right, okay then. So all that's left now is for me to clean up all, of, all the uh, cases. Uh, you don't really need to see that, it's a simple straightforward routine. And I'm going to have a cup of tea, and I think we'll leave that video here now for stripping the crankcases down. And the next video will obviously show us putting brand new shiny bits back into the motor and reassembling the motor. And that's going to be in the next episode. So, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this little splitting the crankcase uh, video. And we'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now. Thanks very much indeed.